Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's do a wiffle ball comparison. So not too long ago I posted a video comparing the difference between tall deep scrunches using wiffle balls and an incline twist to see which one yielded the best color splits. And when I posted that video, I had lots of people say, well, what would it be like if you used aluminum foil in place of the wiffle balls? And then I thought it might be interesting to see what the difference would be between sizes of wiffle balls. So that's what I'm gonna see in this experiment. You know, I like to experiment and see how things turn out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna compare aluminum foil balls, baseball size wiffle balls, and softball size wiffle balls. I suspect that the shirts are going to look pretty similar, so in order to be able to tell them apart, I chose to use three different sizes of shirts. For the aluminum foil, which is going to be on the far left, I'm using a size medium Gildan Ultra Cotton shirt. Then the middle shirt, which is going to be the baseball size wiffle balls, I'm going to use a size large Gildan Ultra Cotton. And for the softball wiffle balls, I'm using an extra large Gildan Ultra Cotton. All three shirts were pre-washed in Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent in hot water. I wrung them out of my panda spin dryer and I have them turned inside out. I'm also placing the shirts face down where I'm going to put the wiffle balls directly underneath the front side of the shirt. So the back sides of the shirt are what you see facing up. I've taken one of my large containers with a long rack and placed it over the top of the container and then in order to keep the shirts and the wiffle balls in place, I'm placing each one of the shirts inside of a plastic basket. The first shirt that I'm gonna do is the baseball size wiffle ball. And if you notice, I'm using quite a few wiffle balls. I think I have eight underneath this shirt. For the softball size wiffle ball shirt, I'm not able to use quite as many wiffle balls because they're larger. And I think I ended up using five on that shirt. So what I'm doing for this technique is I'm placing the balls inside of the basket and then I'm laying the shirt over the top of the balls and pressing the shirt in around the balls. What that does is that helps to keep tall deep scrunches. So if you see the really cool shirts that have the tall deep scrunches, you have to use something to kind of keep that dimension or you have to really watch when you place your ice on top of the shirt that you don't press down those large areas that are sticking up. You can do it without adding wiffle balls or anything underneath, but I think the wiffle balls help to keep that dimension a little bit better. Because they're a harder plastic, they also don't soak up the dye, and I haven't ever had any issues getting the wiffle balls clean. Honestly, when I take them out from underneath the shirt, I normally don't even have to use soap on them. I can just rinse them off with water and they clean right up. So for the aluminum foil shirt, I'm going to try to make the aluminum foil balls about the same size as the baseballs. My aluminum foil was coming off the roll wonky, so it kept bothering me and I kept trying to fix it, but I never could get it to work. I was only able to get six balls of aluminum foil out of this aluminum foil roll before I ran out. So this shirt is going to have six aluminum foil balls underneath. Okay, so the aluminum foil shirt is on the left the baseballs in the middle, and the softballs on the right. I'm going to begin by adding the ice to the top and I'm going to take some of the ice cubes and stick them in between the wiffle balls. Then I'm going to cover the entire shirt with ice. I want to make sure I don't have any fabric left showing that doesn't have ice on top. Okay, so for any of you guys that like to do experiments, you know the best way to get a good experiment is to try to keep as many things the same as possible. But I found doing tie-dye experiments, that doesn't always work because what I found works better is to try to keep my technique the same. So 
If I were doing a baseball size shirt, that's the amount of baseballs I would use. If I was doing a softball size shirt, that's the amount of softballs I would use. And I found that I get better results when I just do things the way I would normally do it and compare the two techniques that I would use if I were doing these shirts independently. So if you did the same experiment, you would probably end up with different results than I would. But if you also made one of these shirts, you would probably end up with different results than I would. So just kind of take this at face value. This is if I were doing my technique, the way the shirts would differ with my technique. If you did this experiment, yours would end up very different. And with tie dye, as you all know, it's hard to keep everything exactly the same sometimes. I'm gonna give it my best shot though, so that I can get a pretty good idea of how these things differ. So I just got in the color Dragon Egg from Happy Cat Tie Dye. And I know this color has gorgeous color splits because I've seen where other people have used it. So I decided to use it on this experiment and see what happens. So it's the first time that I'm using this color. One advantage of having all three shirts lined up like this is I can apply the dye all at the same time. And this is the area that I have the hardest time getting kind of similar results because, you know, each time you add dye to a shirt, you tend to add a little bit more or a little bit less. It's really hard to replicate that. With all three of them lined up here next to each other, I think it's making it a little bit easier to make them as close to the same as possible. And I'm also trying not to add a whole bunch of dye to the top of the ice. If you know me very well, you know I kind of like to be a little heavy handed with the dye, but I want to really see this dye color split and so I don't want to add quite as much dye. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some additional soda ash over the top of the dye, and then I'm gonna place this container aside and allow all the ice to melt. After all the ice melted, I came back and checked the shirts, and there was some undissolved dye, so some larger clumps of dye sitting on top of the aluminum foil and the wiffle balls. I didn't want any big chunks, so I went ahead and added another layer of ice just to the top. And even though the aluminum foil balls didn't have quite as much of that, I went ahead and added about the same amount of ice to the top of everything to try to keep everything about the same. Then after that other thin layer of ice melted, I went ahead and allowed the shirts to process for about 48 hours before I rinsed them out. To rinse them, I took all of the shirts to my utility sink and I rinsed them in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I warmed the water up to hot and I continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Once I had all the shirts rinsed, I put them in my utility sink together and I ran some really hot water in the sink. I added a little splash of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water and I allowed all the shirts to soak. When the water was almost clear, I put them into my washing machine and wash them using a hot water cycle and a little bit of Dharma's professional textile detergent. So after all the shirts were washed and dried, this is what they look like. Okay, so here are all three shirts together and I've placed them in the same order that I had them on the rack. So it makes it a little bit easier to discuss for you to kind of remember where each shirt was. Right off the bat, I had a really hard time photographing this color, and I don't entirely know why. I photographed the shirts flat like I normally do, and then I photographed them on the mannequin. And the 
Shirts that I did on the mannequin came out the correct color. The color shows up really well, but when I laid them flat, they photographed too dark and then it was just weird. And so when you're looking at these, just look at the flat ones for the technique. But if you wanna see the actual cool color that Dragon Egg is, look at the mannequin shirts because I think that's a much better representation of this really cool color. Okay, so let me start off by talking about the aluminum foil shirt. This is the one that was the size medium and I used the six aluminum foil balls underneath. I also had the shirt with the front part of the shirt facing down. And when I do that, I think I get better color flow on the front side of the shirt. Just, I mean, you can compare for yourself. You can see both the front and the back. The back, I do have one little area that's got a darker blob of dye. And the area on the back of the shirt has larger quantities of dye because that's where I applied the dye. Then the dye kind of filters down to the front and I think it looks more, you know, floral, organic. It has a cooler flow, I think, on the front of the shirt. That's why I like to face the front of the shirt down because I think that's where the cooler flow is. I think this shirt on the front doesn't have as large of blobs on the shirt. The little areas are smaller and they're a little wispier. Okay, so let's move on to the baseball wiffle shirt, which was the one in the middle where I used the eight wiffle balls. It looks very much like this, the aluminum foil shirt, except the areas on the front are not quite as wispy. And of course they're spaced a little further apart. On the back, I do have larger chunks of dye, just like I did on the aluminum foil shirt. I have a couple of extra, like, larger spots of dye that are darker, but I don't quite see as much of a difference between the front and the back on this shirt as I did on the aluminum foil shirt. The areas of dye on the back are not quite as large. I still like the front of the shirt better. I think it's wispier. I think it has a better dye flow but I don't see quite as drastic of a difference between the front and the back as I did on the aluminum foil shirt. On the flat shirt, it also looks like I don't have a lot of color on that one side. I do, like, like I said, I had a hard time photographing these. So yeah, I mean, you can see it when you look at the shirt on the mannequin. And finally, this is the softball size wiffle ball shirt. And it's kind of the same thing as the baseball. I mean, I do see the areas of better dye movement on the front part of the shirt. And then on the back part, I do have a couple large areas of like the darker dye. But there's not a huge difference between the front and the back. There is some, but it's not huge. And I don't think there's a large difference between the softball and the baseball size shirt. So when I put all three of them back together again, the first thing that I notice is on the wiffle ball shirts, the baseball and the softball shirt, you can basically see where I had the wiffle balls. That's where your large little blobs of color are. I don't think it's as noticeable on the aluminum foil shirt, at least on the front sides. That's what I'm talking about. I do think that you see like little darker blobs of color, but I think they're a little bit more defined with the wiffle balls. Obviously, the little areas of color are larger with the softball wiffle ball than with the baseball wiffle ball, which I kind of expected. And then I think that the dye flow on the aluminum foil shirt is just a lot wispier. It's not quite as large of chunks of dark flowing out from the areas as it is on the softball and the baseball size wiffle balls. So, as far as this experiment goes, my conclusion is, is there's not a huge difference between wiffle balls. If you want larger chunks of color, then use softball size. If you want smaller chunks of color, use baseball size. And normally what determines which size wiffle ball I use is the size of the garment. If I'm doing a hoodie, a lot of times I'll use softballs. If I'm doing like a child shirt or a small shirt, I'll use the baseball size. As far as the difference between wiffle balls and aluminum foil, I think maybe if you want less of a defined look and you want wispier, the aluminum foil might be the way to go. This is the first time I've ever used aluminum foil for tall deep scrunches and I really like it. 
The only thing that I don't like about the aluminum foil versus the wiffle balls is it had a little bit more larger color blobs on the back. And I like not quite as large color chunks on the back that I get with the wiffle balls. But part of that could just be my technique because like I said, this is the first time that I've used aluminum foil. Okay, so we've discussed all the shirts, but I cannot go without discussing this dye color because it is such a cool dye color. This is the first time I've used it on shirts and it is so pretty. You know, it's got the orangey red color. It has some green, yellow, even a little bit of aqua. It just is a really pretty color. The colors that are mixed together are a little bit unexpected. I mean, normally you don't see green and kind of an orangey red mixed together, but it totally works and it is gorgeous. This is Dragon Egg from Happy Cat Tie Dye. And I have a link down below in the description for this video to her website where you can order some of this color. She has a lot of other dye colors out on her website that she mixes specifically for ice dyeing. So they all split great. I mean, I don't have all of her colors yet, but the ones that I do have are gorgeous. So I hope this kind of explains the differences for the people who were asking for me to do this experiment. And if you've enjoyed the experiment, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it. And I would also appreciate if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.